Time to make a circuit, but this time we're gonna control it with some code. To start, we're plugging in our USB-C power cord so that we have power, and we're gonna turn it on by clicking our switch. Then we're gonna take our Raspberry Pi and place it on top of the map so that the ethernet ports line up so that we know that the GPIO pins over here match the pins on the map over here. So this top left one is 3.3 volts of power. We're gonna use that one again, and let's get started by getting our wires. So we're gonna take our first conductor wire and put it into 3.3 volts of power on the top pin. Then we're gonna take our next wire and we are going to put it into the ground, which is the third one on this row, or we could do any other ground to the bottom left might be an easy one, but I'm gonna do the third one over on this row. Next up is plugging the resistor in so that the light bulb doesn't pop. So we're gonna put the resistor in the same row. I'm gonna put it in 1B. First leg of the resistor's in, now I'm gonna put this in 1F. Now I'm gonna take the LED. Notice that we have a long side and a short side. We're gonna take the long leg of the LED, the positive side, and plug it into the same row as the resistor. So I'm gonna put the long leg of the LED in H1. Then the short leg, you can really put anywhere you'd like. I'm just gonna put it a couple rows below, wherever it falls. Looks like it's gonna end up in row three. So I plug that in. Then finally, I take the cord that's plugged into the ground and I bring it over. I'm just gonna touch it to the LED to make sure that it turns on. Great, so now I just need to put it anywhere in row three and that light will turn on. I'm just gonna put it in row F. And there we go, we have lit up our LED again with making a simple circuit. Next up is we want to boot up our Raspberry Pi, get to actually code this to turn on and turn off. So to get visual access, we're gonna take the micro HDMI cord and we're gonna plug this into the side right over here. After doing that, go over to your switcher and click switch to PC2 because this is our second PC and our switch will switch over to the Raspberry Pi operating system. The mouse won't work until we plug in a cord to our USB port over here. So we're gonna find off to the side of the computer, the USB cord that connects with the mouse. We're gonna plug this in and your keyboard and mouse should work as long as you have the wireless USB receiver plugged in or on a wired keyboard, both of the wires to the keyboard and mouse are plugged in to the switcher. Now I don't have internet right now because I don't have the ethernet cord plugged in, but I don't need it. I'm gonna just go to the top left of my Raspberry Pi, click on the Raspberry icon, programming, and I'm gonna go to the Thani Python editor, which is gonna appear and look like this. So we're gonna actually write a program right now that's gonna allow us to turn this LED light on manually. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna find a general purpose input output port. I'm gonna use 17 in this example. So that over is one, two, three, four, five, six from the top. So I'm gonna take my power cord, which is currently in 3.3 volts of power, which is my gray cord, and I'm gonna move this down and I'm gonna count by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if I look at that right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm on the seventh pin. I should be on the sixth pin. I need to bring this up by one. If it's not the right pin, it's not going to work. Let's just double check. That's one too high. And you'll notice that I have to be very specific. Okay. So that is general purpose pin number 17. The light is currently not on, but we're gonna write a program that's gonna allow it to turn on. By the way, I just messed up a couple times by accident, but you might also not get it to light up if it's in the wrong port, so I guess that's kind of good to show. First thing we write, from GPIO zero, which is our GPIO pins, we're gonna use the library of pins that's been already written by other people, and we're gonna import the LED library, which will allow us to do stuff with these LEDs with code that other people have written. Next, we need to write lowercase LED space equals space capital L capital E capital D parentheses 17, which is gonna tell us that our LED light is in GPIO port number 17. It will know what is going to be talking to it so that it will turn on. Final thing we wanna write is LED dot on open parentheses close parentheses and as soon as i click run we're going to see that our light will turn on now even if i stop my program my light's going to stay on and that's because the program told it to stay on and it doesn't have something built in of how to turn off so the only way we're going to get it to turn off is one by opening the circuit by unplugging one of the wires 
but even if I were to plug that wire back in, it would still light up again. So with our code, we're gonna have to write led.off. So we're gonna modify this command to led.off, and if we run that and I click run, then we'll notice that our LED will turn off. Now you may have noticed that I rewrote LED on to LED off. What would happen if I ran LED on and LED off right next to each other? If I run this and I look down, it's gonna look like nothing happens. If we look really close, we might notice that a little light lights up for half of a second. You can kind of see the voltage the first time lit up a tiny bit. You can kind of see it in the middle but it's basically turning on and off immediately so fast that we can barely tell because there's no time between LED on and LED off. We need to include some sort of wait time between them so that it knows to turn on for a moment and then after being on, then turn off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the end of line one. I'm gonna click and then I'm gonna hit enter on the keyboard to add a space so I have a line between the two and on this line, I'm going to say from time, which is a library called time, we're going to import a library called sleep. Sleep will allow us to have the LED light wait for a moment. So after my LED dot on, I now will be able to, again, go to the end of the line, hit enter, and type sleep parentheses, and then how much I want to sleep. I'm going to say one second, and then close parentheses. I'm also going to add a sleep command down here, sleep one. That way it waits a second before it turns off. So I have from time import sleep. And then if I run this program, we'll notice over here, the LED light will click, turn on, and then turn off. It stayed on for one second and then turned off. So we are now controlling our LED with code. Something I recommend you guys trying, and this is going to be the end of the video, is try doing like a sleep for 10 seconds, or maybe even sleep for like 0.5 seconds, and see what's going to change based off of your sleep commands. So to recap, we're no longer just plugged into power, we're using a general purpose pin, which we're labeling with what LED we're using, we're using pin 17. What if I wanted to use a different pin? Let's say I wanted to use pin number 27. What I would have to do is I'd have to take this pin and bring it one down, because that's pin one down. And if I ran this program now, it would not work. If I ran it, nothing's gonna happen. But all I would have to do to change it to use that is change my LED port from 17 to 22, because that's what the name of it is. And now that I've renamed it 22, or actually I think it's 27, right? It's not gonna work for 22, because it's 27. If I rename this 27, because I only put this one down, 27, and I ran it, it would now work again, and we can see the code's working. So really, in naming these ports, we are just saying which one we need to use. That's it. See you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed.